how to give great feedback and increase learning and change. See, that is going to be there. Our experience comes in there. This is called the idiosyncratic greater effect. So under, under think, how to give great feedback and increase learning and change is what we are going to try to do now. I think that's really the crux of everything. You want your people to do better, it's all there, right? How to give great feedback and increase learning and change. Increase learning and change. This is just what we are trying to do. All right. So I was very interested when I learned this. <laughs> you know, if you get a colorblind person and you show them that picture and say, tell me how green are some of these chilies and how red are some of these chilies, the colorblind person will tell me they all look brown. But a more yellowish brown. You ask another colorblind person, he'll say, no, it's not that yellowish, it's more brownish than yellow. <laughs> you ask the third colorblind person, he'll say, no, no, y'all are both wrong, it's like really yellow. So what have we done now? We have asked three colorblind people to describe that. Even if you take everything that those colorblind people are saying and we put it onto a graph and we look at the average, they is still not going to tell us anything about that. Are you all understanding that point? So if colorblind people cannot assess redness or greenness of chili, right? If colorblind, if people are colorblind, they cannot assess the redness or greenness of the chili. So therefore, what we call is the error of a colorblind person trying to assess this is not random but it's predictable it's not a random error it's a predictable error saying your error is going to be there is going to be an error it's going to be wrong do you understand the difference between random error and predictable right random is i try to do some sometimes i get it right sometimes i get it wrong put that margin of error this is not that this is predictable there is going to be a mistake a huge mistake because there's no clue right so more colorblind people also assessing will actually give us more wrong measurements. <laughs> Don't, doesn't take us any closer to the truth. All right? Understood so far? All right. So when we average all of that, we still don't realize. So what's the learning here? We are all colorblind when it comes to abstract attributes, like assessing people's potential, strategic thinking, commitment, curiosity, No, that's the learning. Yeah, it is coming from some research done by two Harvard professors. Okay, so what does this mean? If the Dilduk is said, okay, assess someone on his potential, the way you assess him, and if I was to assess him, and if Iranda Irendra was to assess him, and if Shenal was to assess him, <laughs> it's like four colorblind people trying to assess them. Because even if we have a definition saying potential is this, which is what the HR people now do, you have a definition of what is the competency and all of that. What it says is we cannot keep the definition of an abstract concept in mind and then assess somebody because our bias comes in there. Our experience comes in there. Uh, what, what we think of potential comes in. So I say, my potential is this, therefore you are, your potential is this. <laughs> Are we understanding? So this really turns on its head <laughs> everything we are currently assessing in people. Because it says, four people assess, wrong. And other thing is, now if Diluk is assessing me and says, Sanjeev, your potential is like this because your commitment is not good or whatever, I cannot recognize myself in what he is saying. Because in my mind, I am committed. <laughs> Now, Dilruk is saying, Sanjay, you are not committed. On a ranking of Z, 1 to 5, I give you a commitment of 2. Yeah, 5 is the highest. I, I can't recognize myself in that because in my mind, I am doing everything I need to do to be committed. In my mind, my mind I am committed. Does that make some sense to you? Now, get your, try to get your heads down this, right? This is really important because it actually changes a lot of the ways that we think. Yeah? So, this is called the idiosyncratic greater effect. <laughs> There's a name also. Idiosyncratic greater effect. 
and apparently this has been proven by psychometric research for the last 40 years. <laughs> that is from the 80s. Yeah, although we have not really known it. <laughs> Idiosyncratic rater effect. Because we cannot rate people uniformly on abstract concepts. Commitment is an abstract concept. Potential is an abstract concept. Did you achieve your sales target or not is not an abstract concept. That's very clear. Yeah? So, what is this idiosyncratic rater effect or IRE telling us? We are notoriously unreliable raters of others. Who is we? Human beings. Right? We don't have the ability to hold a stable definition of an abstract quality in our mind, like assertiveness, and evaluate others. And our evaluation is colored by our own experience, our own understanding, and our own bias. So, for example, what is meant by good? <laughs> what is lenient? What is harsh? What is arrogant? <laughs> it's only what I think it is, isn't it? Yeah? <laughs> Doesn't this uh, throw a lot of things on its head? <laughs> yeah, how on earth do we do this now? Right? But don't worry, there's a solution. <laughs> there is a solution. Right? And more than 50% of the ratings we give people are affected by the idiosyncratic rater effect. So what is that saying? More than 50% of the ratings we give people are wrong. Are wrong. And this, when I was when I was reading up on this, I was thinking of my gosh, all the mistakes I have made. A lot to do with this. All the mistakes I have made when I am giving feedback to people and then wonder why they resist my feedback, <laughs> why they get very angry with me, why they get very upset with me, is this. <laughs> and it made a lot of sense. It made a lot of sense. Okay, so that is why it's difficult to accept feedback. Because I can't recognize myself in the feedback. You're saying I'm bad, I can't say, no, I'm not bad, I'm good. Yeah, so our self-image is not matching the image that somebody else is now saying about me, right? It's like looking in the mirror and you can't recognize yourself. Because that's what somebody else is saying. So I think, I'm not lazy, I'm committed, I don't have a bad attitude, why is my boss saying I do? Because what I mean by bad attitude is not what the boss means as bad attitude. 